Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Barocas with YOLO Live and today I'm going to talk about one of the most complex topics, how to make sure you have the right stream settings. Before we dig in, reminder, please like and subscribe to the channel. There's lots of great information. You'll want to stay tuned. People ask all the time, what's the best frame rate? What's the best data rate? Well, the answer for you is not the answer for someone else. And the answer for them is not the answer for someone else because your talk show is not their soccer game and their soccer game is not their you know musical concert. Everybody's needs are different. Another thing to consider is whether you're trying to stream it or whether you're trying to record it. Also, do you have a lot of bandwidth or are you bandwidth limited where you're at? All of these things need to be considered when figuring out what is the best frame rate and bit rate for your stream. There are three key parameters you need to select between when setting up your live stream or recording. First of all, there is the constant bit rate or variable bit rate. The second one you need to consider is the total bit rate of the stream that you're going to be able to allocate, whether you're streaming or whether you're just recording. The last thing you need to consider is your frames per second. And all three of these things work together to determine your image quality. Now, honestly, this is no easy task for anyone, because if you're doing sports, you're going to want a higher frames per second, which is going to give you less data per frame. If you're streaming over a really tight connection, you're not going to have a lot of bits to allocate to all those different frames. So maybe you want to use less frames per second. And then lastly, constant bit rate versus variable bit rate is going to determine how those bits are allocated per frame. To adjust your settings, first go on over to the gear icon right here. We're going to click on that and I have it set up in the encoding settings. This is where you are determining how the compressor in the YOLO box compresses this video. There is only one compressor. So what you record is what you stream. It's the same file going in both directions. There's not two different encoders, one data rate, one frame rate, one way of encoding your video. That is how the YOLO bot works. So constant bit rate determines that you have so much data and each frame gets the same amount of data regardless of how much it needs. This can be good if you're sending out, let's just say over a cell phone network and you only have so much data and it can't go higher than that, otherwise you'll drop frames. So by using constant bit rate, you're ensuring that it never really goes above what you set. However, if you're doing sports and you're painting the camera very quickly, that frame may need more information in order to not get all blocky and it's not going to get it because it has a constant bit rate. So it only has so many frames per setting. For example, let's just say you're doing a stream at five kilobits a second, but you want to do 60 frames a second. That's only going to leave you 83 kilobits per frame. Now, if you drop this down to 30 frames a second, you're going to get 167 kilobits for every frame. You've doubled the amount of data available for every frame by cutting the frames in half. That way you're ensured that you're able to preserve more detail because you've got more data per frame. Also, as I says, constant bit rate is going to only give 167 kilobits for every frame. 167 is all you're going to get. Whereas if you say variable bit rate, now what's going to happen is that bit rate and frames per second, that's going to math out to 167 kilobits per frame, but that's an average. So if the frame needs less, you know, things have stopped moving, the camera's pointed in one direction, then that data rate can come down. And what that means is your data rate will decrease because it doesn't need all of the bits that are available per frame. It's able to maintain the detail without using up all the bits. So your variable bit rate will come down. But if you have a lot of motion, a, a quick pan or a, a dissolve or something like that, then it's going to spike. It's going to go over that 167 bits per frame. It's going to go to 200, 250 bits. It's going to spike up a little bit higher so that it can maintain 
the image quality of what's happening on the screen. Now, if you have a limited bit rate for your streaming service, it may go too high and then you'll drop frames. So it's a catch-22. You want to preserve the quality of the image, but that may take more data and that may take more frames than you have available. Let me give you another example. If we pump this up to 10 kilobits a second, because we're not streaming, we are just recording and we're recording internally so that we can get to 10 or you can go to 20 or 30. You can go all the way up to 50 megabits a second. And that's a really healthy data rate. But let's just say we're going to keep it at 10,000 10, kilobits or 10 megabits per second. That's going to be at 60 frames a second, 167 kilobits per frame. At 30, it's 333 kilobits per frame. At 24 frames a second, it's 416 kilobits per frame. So you can see how just changing your frame rate can really increase the amount of bits available to each of those frames. And if you increase the frame rate all the way up to 60, yes, you have more frames for smoother motion, but at the same time, you're reducing the amount of data that's available for each frame. Keep in mind, the choice between constant bitrate and variable bitrate is the way that you can help ensure the quality of your stream because constant bitrate is always going to allocate those bits whether that frame needs it or not. So that if you have frames that need more, there's nothing extra. If you have frames that need less, they're always going to get that. It's great for streaming because you don't have to worry about passing the ceiling, but for recording where you don't really have that limitation, I would say you're always going to want to use variable bitrate because it's always going to make sure that all the bits that are available are allocated and if it needs the spike a little bit higher, it will because with variable bitrate, it's allocating those bits on a dynamic basis so that if you're, if the action needs more, it'll go up because you're, again, you're setting the average, it'll go higher, slightly higher than what you've set. And for recording, that's fine because the card is going to be able to handle that. For actually streaming, that's more of a challenge. And you have to determine what is more important to you. Is it the frames per second? Is it the quality of the image? Or is it the reliability of the stream? And that's where you make your choice. Because if you want a reliability of the stream, then choosing constant bitrate is going to give you the best reliability of the stream because it's always going to be sending a constant bitrate. If you want the best quality, I would say that the variable bitrate is going to do the best job because it will actually go above what you set for a period of time and go below what you set for a period of time, depending upon the compression of that image. Sometimes the image needs more, sometimes the image needs less. And then right here, you set what you can based on what you're recording. If it's a talking head, 30 frames per second is more than enough. Maybe even 24, 25 frames per second is good. And that will leave you more data per frame to make sure you're capturing all the resolution in the frame. I hope this has helped you understand the different settings in the YOLO box that you can choose between to ensure the quality of your stream and the quality of your image. Again, if you like these tutorials, please like and subscribe. You'll be notified when the next ones come out. My name is Anthony Barocas with YOLO Live. Thanks for watching.